Will you uh, check the? Do you have your phone with you? I do not unless it comes in. Can we go get it? We just run and check the church's Facebook page and see if it's running. Remember the front door's locked, so you might have to unlock it before you go. I don't know if anybody's here already or not. Dawn's going to check and make sure this is actually working. Uh, I wanted to come on just a little early just to make sure. But good morning. Happy Easter. If you're here already. Hey, I see people. Somebody shoot me a quick comment, make sure this is actually working. Yay. I'm gonna wait just a couple more minutes. <clears throat> It's working. People are watching. <laughs> I just made Dawn run next door and now she's out of breath. Because <laughs> I couldn't tell if this was working. We got people on. What time is it? What time is it? 10.57. Okay. Good morning. Dawn said good morning and if you didn't hear her. She's in her assigned seating. Ready for <laughs> I'm gonna wait, wait until 11 to make sure everybody who wants to be here is going to be here. So I'll actually get out of the way so you can see, look, they, they decorated the cross, look. Is he normal yet? <laughs> I think it's close enough, right? Okay, uh, well, I'm going to get started with a couple of announcements. Um, first, again, remember that the church is open on weekdays. That's Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. If you uh, would like to just come in and sit in the sanctuary and be... I'm looking at possibilities of getting some music going. Also, uh, there's going to be a little more to this than just the message this week. I thought I'd try to make it as much like a worship as I can. And I think I'm actually going to invite Jennifer to come next week, too, to play a couple songs. 
Uh, so if you want to even sneak in in the middle of the week and grab a hymnal so that you can sing along, you might want to do that. Also, uh, usually next Sunday is the Stump the Pastor Sunday, but uh, we haven't been able to get the word out about that, so I'm going to bump it another week. So if you have questions about the Bible or the meaning of something or, you know, anything, you know, the church, whatever it might be, um, get those to me somehow, either on the Facebook page. I'll actually probably put up a separate post so questions can go there or you can email me or text me uh, to get those to me. Um, for those of you who don't have my cell phone number, it's 269-275-2633. So get those questions to me, and uh, in two weeks, I will answer them to the best of my ability. Also, uh, we're doing this on Facebook again. I thought I was going to be able to get away with it on YouTube, but after I looked into it, uh, you know, preliminary-wise, early in the week, I thought it would work. And then when I tried to do it yesterday, it told me it wouldn't let me go live anymore unless I had a thousand people subscribed to my page and it wouldn't even let Dawn find my name to subscribe to my page. So YouTube looks like it's out. So I'm going to look at a couple other things. I'll keep you posted the best I can. All right. <clears throat> I would like to begin this week, this Easter Sunday, by first of all saying Happy Easter. It's Easter, everybody. I hope you have meals planned. I just put our ham in the oven. And um, looking forward to that. And uh, I think he is risen. Yeah, he is risen. To which you respond, he is risen indeed. I can't hear you, but, you know, he is risen. Somebody type for he is risen indeed. <laughs> I would like to begin, however, with a prayer. And... Uh, this is a prayer, uh, like our usual uh, joys and concerns time, so there will be pauses in here for you to meditate on, um, well, all of those things that you think of when these phrases are brought up. So let's, let's pray. <clears throat> God of power and majesty, with the rising of the sun, you have raised Jesus Christ and delivered him and us from death's destruction. We praise you on this bright day for all your gifts of new life. Especially we thank you for all victories over sin and evil in our lives. For loyalty and love of friends and family. For the newborn, the newly baptized, and those now in your eternal home. For the renewal of nature. For the continuing witness of the Church of Christ. God of eternity, you are present with us because of Christ rising from the dead, and you persist in lifting us to new life in him. We bring to you our prayers for this world in need of resurrection. Especially we pray for nations and peoples in strife. For the poor and impoverished at home and abroad. For those we know in particular circumstances of distress. For the diseased and the dying.
for all who follow the risen Christ. We pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our gospel reading for today is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalena and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might come and anoint him. Very early on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. They were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, although it was extremely large. Entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting at the right wearing a robe, a white robe, and they were amazed. And he said to them, Do not be amazed. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who has been crucified. He has risen. He is not here. Behold, here is the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter, He is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb. For trembling and astonishment had gripped them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The word of God for the people of God. <clears throat> I don't know about you. I came across this line a couple times on Facebook from some friends, and I thought it was apropos. Um, but... Uh, this was indeed the lentiest Lent I have ever Lented in my whole life. And that's saying something because I was raised Roman Catholic. And here we are at the end of it. We are at Easter Sunday. And I, usually this is the year in the lectionary where it's the reading of Matthew, but I thought this year is much more like Mark because the situation here in Mark's gospel is a whole lot like our own. The disciples are hiding away at home because they're afraid they're next. And the women at the tomb are described with several terms here. Um, the, the word amazed, I don't like that they used amazed because the technical word is distressed. They were distressed. That sounds familiar. They were trembling. Uh, they were bewildered, and actually the, the literal Greek word there is ecstatic, um, which, despite how we use it nowadays, more literally is translated as they were out of their minds, and they were afraid. So they were distressed, trembling, out of their minds, and they were afraid. This all sounds very familiar. Sounds just like most of us in this world today. And the, one of the reasons, I, uh, the other reasons, the fact the main reason I chose Mark here is because of how Mark's constructed. Um, Mark is the shortest of the Gospels. Uh, it doesn't give a birth narrative. It starts with Jesus' baptism. And then the oldest manuscripts end right here where I stopped reading. It wasn't until decades later, really, that they, they started finding... Uh, manuscripts um, that had add-ons to it. And so literally, the Gospel of Mark, it, it reads like theater. It reads like a campfire tale, like somebody is sitting around with a group of people around the campfire, 
telling a story that's quick. It just goes, goes, goes. If you look at Mark, every time you read Mark, the thing that always stands out to me especially is how many times they all immediately did something. Jesus immediately did this, and then he immediately did that, and then immediately after that he does this. The word immediately is just rife in the Gospel of Mark. So its pace is quick. And the original ends here at verse 8. And it ends in a way, and this is the reason I like it, um, because it leaves the decision of what to do next up to the reader or to, or to the hearer. As though the person telling the story said, that's where I'm leaving it. Now, what do you think? What do you think happened? What do you think is next? And even more so, what's next for you? What would you do in that situation? There's nothing mystical here. There's no earthquake that rolls away the stone. There's nothing that puts the uh, Roman guards unconscious. There's no angelic glow about the person inside the tomb. He's just described as a young man dressed in a white robe. And all you're really left with in this telling of the tale of Christ is a whole lot of people wondering what it means, what's next. The Gospel of Mark gives no answers. It only asks questions. It asks us what happens next with us. What do we do with the story of Christ now that we've heard it? And it's perfect for the situation we're all in today. Just perfect. Because what we have here with our church, locally, and the church with a capital C, is really a double opportunity. Between COVID-19 and what will likely follow this year as denominational changes, there is a, there is a chance for our own resurrection. especially small congregations like ours. I think that's a, a, a double special message for us because I've, I've served small congregations, solely small congregations, really. And every last one of them is afraid of dying. Which if you think about it, especially on Easter, is very unchristian. Because while death may in fact come, we know there is resurrection. And like Mark, the questions that we have to ask ourselves is, what does resurrection look like now? What does it mean? We may be distressed and trembling out of our minds and afraid now, but we know about rebirth. And we have this chance to ask ourselves, well, what does our resurrected body, the church, the body of Christ, what does Christ's resurrected body here in this place look like? What will our resurrected body be like? What will it do? Because we know and believe in resurrection we must let our fear turn to gladness when this stone that we're living under is rolled away and we are reborn into our community. So I invite you to think about those things. Does our story end in fear? Or do we know what's next? That's our advantage. We know what's supposed to be next, resurrection. And there are only a few of us here 
watching this. Hopefully others will watch it later. But my encouragement to you is to think about this, about what the resurrected body of Christ in Augusta might be like when we are released from this tomb. And that you would spread this word and ask the same thing of others who aren't here or can't be here. And I will do my best to do the same. Until then, let us take at least today to celebrate. Because it's Easter. Christ is risen. And if you want to do it the Greek way, it's Christos Anesti, Alithos Anesti. Amen. And I will see you all next time.